Welcome to this presentation of Slips, Trips, and Falls, brought to you by the Green County Council on Aging. My name is Jeff, and I'm the Education and Outreach Liaison. You might have tuned into this presentation for some good education, or you might have had a previous fall, but I will make you a promise that hopefully your time is worth the information I'll be giving you over the next 20 minutes. You may not have had a previous fall, but are others falling? Let's take a look at some of the numbers. One in four Americans aged 65 and older fall each year, and most of those falls do occur at home. Also, every 11 seconds, an older adult is treated in the ER from a fall. And these falls are the most common cause of non-fatal trauma-related hospital admissions among older adults. And the cost of these falls back in 2015 was $50 billion. 75% of that was covered by Medicare and Medicaid. We might have a battle on our mind when it comes to falls and falls prevention. We can compare the way we used to do things and our way we do things now as we age. Back when we were younger, we might have played with our kids. Now we're playing with our grandkids. Maybe then we were walking miles at a time during the day, and now maybe we can only walk a few blocks based on what's going on in our lives. And why did I put that sports car on there? You know, you might have driven a sports car, but those things are so small and hard to get into. Now we have to bend down and bend our legs and get into these smaller cars. It might be easier to have a larger vehicle where you had some step up bumpers, et cetera. The amount of exercise is different than the way it was when we were younger and the new normal, but we should still be exercising, which I'll get into a little bit later on some other slides. And then we used to be very social and hopefully we're still doing that. It is very important to have a good social life uh, that helps with our, our attitudes and that'll definitely help with our fall prevention. As you can see, we're all getting older. Every second ticks by, we're getting older, but we can still have fun and we can still have time to take care of our health. There's a very bright road ahead. Now you might ask, why are you falling? Here's some reasons I'm going to show you why we might be one of the reasons we might be falling is we may be DIYers, which means do it yourself. As you can see, this little fella is happy. He's got his tools. He's going to take charge and do it himself. Now, hopefully, if you are a DIYer and like to do things on your own, make sure that everything you use, your tools, your ladder, whatever you're using, are in good working order. And I also recommend that you have someone in attendance while you're trying to do some of these tasks. Hopefully this person up here on this roof cleaning out his leaves has someone in attendance so they can keep an eye on him. There's also some precautions there I don't think he really took. Number one, it doesn't look like he has any uh, other device or a safety harness if he is going to climb up on that roof. Um, he's using a blower, he's leaning over. It looks like a pretty dangerous situation and not very safe. So if you're going to be a DIYer, please be very safe in how you do things. Another reason we might be falling is we have these really cool shoes. Now you might wonder why I have these on here. Now, back in the day, the, the disco day, these were the platform shoes. You probably wore your bell bottoms, et cetera, with those. Some of the ladies might have been wearing some of these platform shoes or these high heel stiletto heels. So those are very popular also. But you may be wondering why I have those slippers up there. These really cool house slippers reason that we might be falling is because we don't have any back to them. Uh, you can, as you start to walk, you might hunch over a little bit and your feet are definitely going to slip right out of those shoes. So it's very important that you wear properly fitting, sturdy shoes with non-skid sole. Uh, they also help reduce joint pain if you wear properly fitting shoes. Another reason you might be falling is you quit dancing. And you probably wonder what I mean by this. Well, this all goes into effect with your vestibular system. Your vestibular system can detect your acceleration or your change in your movement. The basic function of your vestibular system is to help prevent us from falling over. The best way to do that is to keep moving uh, by dance, like the two pictures I showed you there, or some do some strength and balance exercises, which I will show you a little bit uh, long in this presentation here. 
For the next few slides, I'm going to talk to you about some common risk factors for falls. The first one is weak muscles because our muscles gradually get weaker as we get older. This can be due to lack of physical activity or exercise or even some conditions like arthritis. We will lose 10% of our strength per decade after we turn age 50. So I turned 60 this year. That means for the past 10 years, I've lost 10% of my muscle mass. Also with that, we lose our flexibility because our muscles have to be flexible to work them out. So it's real important that um, we keep our flexibility and our muscle strength up because these cannot be regained. Another common risk factor for a fall is poor balance. Now a number of things can cause this poor balance. And this goes back to the vestibular system that I mentioned because this maintains the balance by sending our signals to our muscles keep us upright and the muscles that control our eye movement. So it's very important to have good balance. The things that can cause this are some weak muscles, which I just mentioned, poor eyesight. You can have an inner ear infection, or you can have some side effects to some other medication. You might have low levels of vitamin D, which could be another common risk factor. Vitamin D helps regulate your calcium to maintain our bone strength. The best way to get some vitamin D is to go outside on a bright, sunshiny day. Uh, five to 10 minutes a day of sunshine, two to three times a week, is sufficient for your vitamin D level. And alcohol can obviously be a common risk factor for a fall. Just the amount you consume, you might have a low tolerance level of alcohol. You might be mixing some alcohol with some medications or using alcohol as the medication itself. Dizziness can definitely contribute to a fall. The reason is, is that when your blood pressure drops, less blood can go to your organs and muscles, which will increase your likelihood of a fall. Well, this is also more about postural or orthostatic hypertension. It's when your blood pressure drops when you go from lying down to sitting up or from sitting to standing. So you might want to move a little slower. Please don't walk around if you're feeling dizzy. Try and make sure that you drink plenty of water. Six to eight glasses a day is recommended. It's very important to stay hydrated. And if you have this dizziness, you definitely need to talk to your healthcare provider. Another common risk factor for a fall is the fear of falling itself. It's not a bad thing to be afraid of falling. It can definitely affect our balance. Because when we're afraid of falling, our range of motion becomes smaller, our strides become a little shorter, and our pace becomes a little slower. Research has shown that when we try and do two things at once, like walking and talking, our balance and our gait become less stable. Taking any medication may increase our risk of falling. They affect all of us in different ways and sometimes can make us feel dizzy or sleepy. Some of us may be on multiple meds, some of us may be on supplements, and all these will have different side effects. So it's very important that you keep a list of your medications and every time you go to your family physician or your dentist or whatever, it's important to show them different medications you are on before they'll give you any treatment. We might have some problems with our vision and our hearing, which can make it more difficult for us to move around our environment safely. As you can see, I have some glasses on, and every time I get my prescription redone every three or four years, I might have some issues with my depth perception and things like that, and I have to adjust a different lighting with my prescription. If you have a hearing aid, you may need to have them adjusted, or you may need to get some thumb to help with your environment to get around safely. So I would recommend that you have your vision and your hearing checked annually. Now, can we use the fall as a warning sign? as a common risk factor. A fall might be the first sign of a new or a worsening condition. Often it might be temporary, but these can lead to some falls. Some of the conditions that might lead to this, you might have a bladder infection, a urinary tract infection, or even an ear infection, an inner ear infection. You might have some sensory disorders, like I just mentioned on your vision or your hearing, or you may even have neuropathy, which is a numbness in your legs and feet. You may be dehydrated, so make sure you drink plenty of water. You may have low levels of vitamin D. And you may have arthritis already set in, which is using that fall as a warning sign. Now, I'm going to go over this a little bit later also, but you need to create this checklist around your home, in your environment. 
in your apartment, in your condo, wherever you live, you need to have these checklists to help you move around safely. The good news is, is that falls are not a normal part of aging. Most falls can be pre prevented and we have the power to reduce our risk of falls. I don't have time to actually show you this one, but here's a good screening technique that you can use to see your risk level. And this is called the 30 second air stand. This will help test your leg strength and your endurance. So what you'll do is you'll sit in the middle of a chair. You need an assistance with this. You need to have someone watching you while you do this. Cross your arms over your shoulders. You keep your feet flat on the floor. And then you stand up and sit down for a time period of 30 seconds. You can see here, based on the chart I put here, this will be your score, okay? So a below average score indicates that you might have a higher risk for a fall. So you'll look at your age level, and then you'll look at the number of times you can stand up and sit back down in those 30 seconds. There are some prevention techniques that hopefully we can use uh, to help you alleviate or minimize that fall. You have to remember that fall prevention is a team effort. Your doctor, your family, and your friends want you to maintain the highest degree of independence possible. We also, if we're on our own, we have to be mindful of things that's going on around us. We have to look around. We have to stay focused. We need to stop rushing around. We need to stop, look, and listen. Remember when we were little, we'd help our kids cross the street or our parents would help us cross the street and we look both ways and we look at our surroundings before we cross the street. We need to do that in our lives also as we as we age and get older. We need to be focused on what we're doing at all times. Our posture is very important. If we maintain good posture, it keeps our back strong and straight. It can also help us stay balanced, increasing our chances of falling, it can help prevent osteoporosis, it can lower the risk of heart attacks and strokes. It can definitely lift our spirits and decrease our feelings of depression. And it helps improve the blood flow and helps with our digestive issues, which is a very important factor in our posture. Now, practice makes permanent. The more we practice things, the better we're going to get at it. So I don't want you practicing in your recliner or on your sofa. I need you to do to add a little bit of physical activity into your life. This will help with your fall prevention. Why do we need to do this? Well, because physical activity can reduce the risk of falls by improving our strength, our balance, our coordination, our flexibility, and it will definitely raise our confidence level. There's a number of static balance exercises you can do. These static balances um, are more of a standing still and doing him in a standing position. The first one's called the normal stand. So you would just stand shoulder width apart however you stand normally. The next one's called the Romberg stance. So pretend you're Dorothy from the Wizard of Oz and you put your feet together and you put your, uh, your heels and your toes together. Now you're not going to click your heels together like Dorothy did. This is called the Romberg stance. So try and stand there in the Romberg stance. Now, as you do these, I definitely suggest you hold on to a chair or the countertop in your kitchen when you're trying to do these static balance exercises. The next one you'll do is the modified tandem stance, which is all you're going to do is you're just going to move one foot forward while they're together and just leave them off balance a little bit. So one foot's going to be slightly in front of the other and try and balance in this position as you're doing that. Then switch and put the other foot in front so you learn to balance on, on, the, uh, on the modified tandem stance equally. And then the tandem stance is when you put one foot directly in front of the other and you try and stand there. I would definitely hold on to something while you're working on this one. And you can end that with standing on one foot. Put on the chair, lift one foot up and stand on it for 10 to 15 seconds, put it down, put the other foot up and stand on it for 10 to 15 seconds and proceed on with these exercises as you feel able to do. Now there's a number of um, exercises you can do that help with your vestibular system. Uh, this is I've been going over this throughout this presentation. These will help our visual and our vestibular systems 
because it helps us maintain our postural stability. Now, I might be able to show you this one while I'm on this video. Uh, this is called the eye tracking. So you can do it a number of different ways. You can put your thumb right in front of you. Let me put it right there. And you can turn your head side to side and use your peripheral vision and look at your thumb as you do that. That'll help strengthen your vestibular system. Another way to do that is keep your thumb out there in front of you. And instead of moving your head, move your thumb. So you would actually take it over to one side, still looking at your, with your peripheral vision, bring it back in front of you, and then go to the other side and keep looking at that, at your thumb through your eyes, obviously. And it's a great way to uh, help with your vestibular system as you do that exercise. Now the next few slides are, I'm going to go through them a little quickly. Um, and you can go back through this presentation and take a look at them. Uh, the first one is called the single limb stance. Now I mentioned this in the static exercises where you're just going to stand, and hold onto a chair or the countertop, and you're just going to lift one leg up, and then you're going to hold it for 10 seconds, and you're going to repeat with the other leg. This will help train your brain. It also will become aware where your center of gravity, your center of balance is, and also will strengthen your ankles and your hips. Then while you had done the single limb ones, you can now just march in place. You know, you can do this 20 times. Just march in place, hold onto a chair, raise your knee as high as it's comfortable to raise it, and this will help with your dynamic or your moving balance also. Now I mentioned the what's it called the uh, tandem stance where you put one foot in front of the other. Well, you can do that if you have a piece of tape you want to put, or if you have a flooring that you can see the line on the floor, and you can just walk heel to toe, like say 10 feet in front of you, and then turn around and walk heel to toe um, back the other way. This improves your balance and a narrow stance position. It also assists with your dynamic and your movement balance, which we've been talking about. And you can put an object on the floor. It doesn't have to be these blocks as shown in this picture. It can be some canned goods. It can be uh, three boxes of spaghetti, whatever you have in your pantry. And what you're going to do is you're going to do this step over. So you're just going to lay these objects on the floor. And you're going to step over them. This helps train you to lift your feet when you walk. So if you have clutter in your home, you can step over it. And this also helps with uh, stepping over the objects without stopping. So please try and do this and be careful while you're doing this. You might want to have some assistance while you're there. So this is called the step over. Next one with those same items still down there is called side stepping. So you're actually going to step side to side over those objects and then back over the other way repeat this a couple different times. Then you can also, with those objects on the floor still, you can do the figure eight. You would just start at one end, and do the figure eight, and walk around, and repeat this for 10 times. Then if you want to, you can do the figure eight in one direction, which means you would have to sidestep while you're going through the figure eight. That's a good one to do. Now, after you've done all this and you basically have warmed up, you've done some exercises, the best thing for you to do is to take a walk. It's the best form of exercise. It strengthens our muscles. It supports our joints. It eases stiffness and it reduces our pain. And also, if you're pre-diabetic, it helps you after you've had a, a heavy meal. It helps you um, burn off some of that glucose. It helps prevent a blood sugar spike. If you have trouble sleeping, you might take an evening stroll. Or if you have a little depression going on, a brisk daily walk can ease our depression and our anxiety. Now, is there an art to falling? We would like to think so. But we really have to think about this ahead of time in case we do come up in a situation where we might have a fall. The biggest thing to remember is that to try and stay as flexible as possible. Keep your elbows bent and your knees bent as you're going down to the ground, if you're going down to fall. Try not to lock your arms. We don't want you to break a bone or dislocate anything. It's also very important to protect your head. If you're falling forward, try and uh, turn your face to the side like so. All right. And if you're falling backwards, try and tuck your chin down to your chest if you're falling backward. You could also bring your hands up to your head 
that will help you protect your head from that fall. It's very important to protect this head of yours. It wants to be very safe if you do start to have a fall. Now, let's say you saw someone fall and you want to help them. First of all, you need to stay calm, calm them down also, tell them not to worry about their surroundings and uh, check for any injuries they might have. Now, if you happen to see them fall, you see the, saw them hit their head, I would definitely call 911 before you even approach them or as you're approaching them. If they say they're fine and you would like to, you'd like to get up and proceed slowly and help them get up, you can use the back of their pants, you can use a belt, it's not very good to just reach out and grab someone by the arm and yank them right up. So it's very important that you do keep them calm and you stay calm when you help people when you do see have a fall. What happens if you have taken a fall? Let's say you're by yourself. You need to stay calm. And you need to take some breaths and nice, slowly, easy breathing. You need to evaluate your, your situation and sort of make sure you feel okay and if you have anything that might be broken. If you have fallen, you feel fine, you want to try and get up, you can always look for a piece of sturdy furniture to help get yourself up. You can use a sideways inchworm or the glute scoot, which is scooting across the floor on your behind. Uh, you can use your arms and legs, legs both at the same time, as long as you're not injured. Use yourself and uh, pull up on a piece of furniture as you're doing that. And as you do each movement, calm yourself down, Stay sitting, stay in that position, take some breaths until you continue on. Let's talk about our home sweet home. We also need to make our homes safe. Now you need to remove all clutter from your home. It's not very good to have all this clutter in this picture I'm showing you that you have to maneuver. How would you maneuver around all this? You gotta go this way and this way and this way and all the way here to, this to get to the couch. So it's very important that you remove the clutter from your home. Also, it's very important that you secure any rugs or carpets you have to the floor. Many of us have these. We have them in our bathroom. We have them in front of our kitchen sink. We have them in entrance ways and doorways. Uh, we all own these, but we need to use double face tape, use slip resistant backing, or just take them out all together if you're worried about falling on them. We all love our pets. Every year, 86,000 fall injuries involve our pets, probably when we're out taking them on a walk. But the good news is, is that people who have pets actually can lose more weight, okay? So it's important to get out and get that exercise and take your dog a walk. And be very careful why you're doing that. Sometimes, if, especially if you have a cat uh, or an older dog that's losing some of its senses, get around your feet lay next to you and you may forget they're there and that can definitely contribute to a fall. So it's very important to keep an eye on our pets. Now back in the energy crisis of the 70s, which a lot of you may not remember, we were always told to turn the lights off as we leave a room. Now as we age, we want to use as much light as possible. We can use night lights, illuminated switches, we can store a flashlight by the bed stand in case we get up through the night, there's so many different things you can use, timer-wise, etc. Make sure the lights are on so we can see better as we're walking around. And that goes for the outside of your home too. It's very important as you come in at night, uh, you can have an outside light. You can, if you have steps, you're coming up the steps. You, can, you definitely have it illuminated so you can see where you're going to be safe. And speaking of steps, if you have steps in your house, consider adding a handrail if you don't have two handrails. The handrail on both sides. Um, if you live in an older home and you have those wood stairs, you might want to put some treads up those stairwells uh, to help you be safe. Or if you're out in public, let's say you're at the mall, wherever you are, and you are taking the stairs, you might be very safe. Always hold on to the handrail uh, to be safe at all times. Our bathroom safety is very important to all of us. Here again, you can see those throw rugs in the bathroom again. So make sure it's secured to the floor, double-sided tape, etc. You may want to get a raised toilet seat uh, for the shower or the tub. You may want to add in a handheld, a handheld shower up, a wand up there. Plenty of grab bars all around here for safety. So it's very important to have good bathroom safety. Now, 
does your pantry look like this? Because I know mine sure doesn't. The reason I have this picture up here is that the most common used items in your kitchen or your laundry room or whatever, you want to keep those things on a middle or lower shelf because you want to reach for things that are very accessible that you use a lot instead of reaching all the way up because the worst thing ever is we don't want you going all the way up here make my air a little bit better all the way up here just to get those items up on the top shelf let's say you have something up here on this countertop up here inside the counter we don't want you climbing up here or getting a ladder out to go up here and get things out of there so be very very safe in your home now if you have a personal walking device make sure you have routine maintenance on these devices because like these rollators here these wheels can wear out these handle grips can become loose or frayed same with these handle grips same with these rubber stoppers all these things need to have routine maintenance because you're using them for a reason for your safety so it's very important that you use them correctly and you have routine maintenance on them now here's a slide that just shows you where I got some of the information a lot of things from the National Council on Aging and Steady You, etc. So it's very important I put this on there so you know where I got some of the information from. Two more slides to talk about. Hopefully you learned some things today and maybe you'll put into action some of those things. If you want the Green County Council on Aging to do an assessment of your home or talk about grab bars or medical alert buttons, please give us a call and we will set up a time to come and talk with you about some of these things. In conclusion, I would like you to get off your anatomy and take charge of your health because we, as we age, have lived very great lives. We want to continue to live the life we love, love the life we live. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this presentation.